I call the meeting of the Stool Park Board of Trustees at, in order to order at this time. Today is July 24th at 7.30. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Aiello. Mm -hmm. Trustee Silella. Here. Trustee Cazone. Here. Trustee Case. Here. Trustee Tucker. Here. Trustee Wagner. Here. President Bolfus. Here. Let's all stand for the pledge. And after the pledge, please remain standing for a short prayer. I'll lead off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Trustee Wagner has the prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that might affect the residents, staff, businesses, surrounding communities, and all those that enter the village of Villa Park. And continue to remind us that all we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for their greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. The next item on our agenda is any amendments to the agenda. Any board members have any amendments? Seeing none, we'll move on to number four, uh, Lions Club check presentation. <laughs> Check. I've been present to the Alliance Club, their chair of the Summerfest uh, beer sales. Uh, check here from Dole Park for $4,319 and 50 cents. There's the check. Thank you. And thank you for all your work. Thank you for, thank you very uh, for taking that over. Thank Appreciate you very much. it very much. So, if you need any help next year, so I'm here, let me know. I'm always willing to pull it down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, one of the Lions would like to tell us what you're going to plan on doing with that four thousand dollars. What does the Lions what's your goals? Well we we have uh, what is our uh, our committee will meet later this year, but we we donate to local local charities, um, hearing aids, right, right, most of them, right, right. We have we have a list the finance committee looks at, and we and most of them are local. So we, we yeah, we donate we donate that money. Scholarship right. money to Willowbrook High School. Scholarships, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thanks again. Thank Sorry you. to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda is appointments and reappointments to the boards and commissions. The uh, Board of Fire and Police Commission, Glenn Nystrom and Ray Rupsearch, Sugar Creek Golf Course Board, Joseph Clamone, Senior Citizens Commission, Ruby Burns, Nadia Haddeck. Hi, Duke. Hi, Duke. Hi, Duke. Hi, Duke. <laughs> okay, Christina Painter and Irene uh, Kaler, do I have a motion for the appointments to the boards and commissions? Mr. President, Trustee Wagner, I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Second, Mr. Trustee Cazone. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay, roll call vote. Trustee Case. Yes. Uh, Trustee Tucker. Yes. Trustee Silella. Yes. Trustee Cazone. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. President Bolfus. Yes. Item number six, consider a res resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Villa Park and the DuPage, and DuPage County and on behalf of the Emergency Telephone System Board of DuPage County to imp implement the DuPage Justice Information System. Andrew Keenan. Thank you, Your Honor. On July 11, 2016, the board voted to support the purchase of the records management system 
The DuPage County Emergency Telephone System Board has purchased and implemented an integrated justice system known as DUGIS, which allows participating police and fire departments to exchange information with and between the county's court and correctional entities. The next phase of implementation is the approval of the IGA for the operation and maintenance of the system. And Your Honor, on July 11, 2016, Within the uh, synopsis of the program, the board approved an amount of $439,000 for both fire and police. And I believe in the materials submitted, uh, the proposal is just a little bit less than that. I think it's going to be about $365,000 plus or minus. And if we add uh, fire in there, I think we'll be right on spot or very close. Um, and this records management system will replace the records management system purchased in 2005. Um, this system that they're using now is very antiquated. We had uh, very, uh, very limited um, technological advances since 2005 with this particular program. And now uh, we've updated the equipment within our squad cars and uh, ambulances and fire apparatus as well in preparation of the new DUGIS system and shortly it'll be uh, turned on to all of us. So within the next uh, few months, all of the participating entities, whether it's a village or a, a city or the county, et cetera, will uh, take the IGA before its board, uh, hopefully have approval from its board, and then be participating in the operation and maintenance of the system. Uh, it's not an inexpensive system to participate within, however, if we, as mentioned in, in 2016, if we don't uh, participate within this system, we have to have a system of our own. And so by participating, it's much less expensive. And in fact, in the uh, material, you notice that within five years, there's been money set aside from the participating agencies to replace some of the equipment already. So it's kind of a robust plan where Folks can share uh, data between agencies. So when we go to the new DUGIS system, it's, it's from when the vehicle is pulled over through the court resolution of that particular incident. And communities along with the county can share information between each other, which uh, it's very narrowly done right now. So thank you, Ron. So, so, I ask questions. So sort of is when, if there was a traffic stop or some incident, uh, the officer right there would have would know who he's dealing with? I believe so, and when they enter that particular data, then the other participating agencies will see that this vehicle's been pulled over, who it is, et cetera, because of the data sharing agreement. And this also, you mentioned, goes with fire. To what extent, how does that work? They also have access to the system, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, any questions or comments from the board? Cheryl, Trustee Tucker. Yes, um, I just have a, a question on the, the legal standard contract or agreement that we have. Is that a common, I'm sure the legal system here read it through, is that a common set type thing that we have for amendments between a village and the DuPage County? Right, uh, you'll see intergovernmental agreements like this that reference the authority under the Constitution and the state statutes. Um, this was developed by the county, reviewed by all the municipalities, including us, and it was come to a kind of standardized agreement that everyone agreed to, so yeah, it's ready to go. Trustee Wagner. Thank you, President Wolfis. Uh, the ETSB, they're up and running and, and meeting already, is it, that's correct? Yes. And this will be, will this be housed in the new facility on County Farm Road, is that where, or is it going to be there? Yes. Okay. That, that's all I had. Well, it's not part of Duke Camp, is it? No, no. but it's in the county's uh, facility yep. on, on that particular area. It's not part of Duke Camp, though. It's, so this is not going to replace Duke Camp? No. Okay. I, I, Your Honor? Go ahead. You might, uh, Trustee Wagner, you might be thinking of Duke Camp's second facility that's being constructed right now, which will replace the facility that they're in. And the second facility is a hardened facility within uh, the complex on the county's uh, property. But this is a records management uh, okay. system. Thank you, I, that, that clarifies it for me. Anyone else with any questions? Right. 
Seeing none, roll call to move this forward. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Present? Both this. Yes. Item number seven. Consider a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing a contract for village building cleaning services with uh, service master cleaning solutions in the amount not to exceed seventy-four thousand five hundred and thirty-two dollars, and I believe that's for a year. Yes, yes so, it is, Your Honor. Yeah. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The village contracts with a cleaning service to clean Village Hall, the Police Department, Public Works, Economic and Community Development, and the Metro Station. Staff recommends contracting services with Service Master for one year to clean the aforementioned buildings in addition to the Parks Department offices in the amount of $6,211 per month or $74,532 annually. Funds have been budgeted and split between the Parks, Community and Economic Development, Corporate and Metro Division accounts in the amount of $57,100. The remaining balance, $17,432 for the contract would be taken from the General Fund Surplus account. And Your Honor, and board and folks in the audience at home we have a contract now that we that expired and we go month to month uh, the current situation is that the the cleaning crew is uh, not performing well that we currently have uh, staff has uh, discussed this on many different staff meetings and would like to change firms to more of a franchise um, service provider and raise the bar of the cleanliness of the village buildings. Um, if you take a look at our buildings, and, and you can take a look at this building in particular, that finance has a lot of foot traffic, a lot of folks come in, pay their water bills, have questions. Uh, so does my office. Uh, we've done extensive rehab here uh, upstairs and brought this particular building along in the last few years and made renovations. Um, and what we'd like to do is also raise the bar for cleanliness and take care of what we have. Um, the $17,432 staff realizes is an increase. It's not budgeted. That's why we've uh, stated it's a general fund surplus account. We firmly believe that our revenue estimates for this fiscal year we're in are extremely uh, conservative. Uh, expenditures, uh, we in the past have come under uh, expenditures and improved revenues and we believe that we'll make up that seventeen thousand four hundred and thirty two dollars throughout the the fiscal year which already started may first so thank you Your Honor. Okay. any members of the public have any questions seeing none any members of the board trustee case does that include uh, the cleaning supplies with the contract manager here <laughs> well i want to answer that I think it concludes the supplies, but not like the paper towels and stuff that are right. used. So, okay. is that correct? That's correct. I was just waiting for your nod, Your Honor. Yeah. Oh, I sorry. I didn't you. mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, roll call for consensus to move this forward. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Silella? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Present, both this. Yes. Item eight, consider an ordinance of the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, amending the Villa Park Municipal Code related to regular meetings and of the Board of Trustees. Do you want to take this? If you'd like. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. I think <laughs> it is the recommendation of, uh, of our village attorney that the order of business for regular meetings of the Board of Trustees be updated to reflect more current municipal practices. Included within this proposal is a change to the meeting start time from 7.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. as well as the following standing order of business. So, Your Honor and Board and folks in the audience and at home, this is a little different than what we're going to do tonight and, and the, the uh, following meeting, et cetera. So from future, if this is approved, the agendas would be as follows. So number one would be the call to order the roll call. Number two would be the Pledge of Allegiance. Number three would be public comments on agenda items. Number four would be amendments to the agenda. Number five would be proclamations. 
Number six would be the consent agenda, which would be A would be the minutes, B would be the bill listing. Number seven on the agenda would be first reading on ordinances to be codified, <laughs> introduction, no vote. So anything to be codified would be something that changes the municipal code. So it would be an introduction and no vote on the first reading. Number eight would be second reading on ordinances to be codified, which means that a previous meeting you'd have the a first reading of an ordinance to be codified and then the following meeting you would have the second reading on the ordinance to be codified with a vote. Number nine would be ordinances, resolutions, and motions. And your honor and board, those would be ordinances, resolutions, and motions that would be a first and final reading and would be done with it. Number 10 is public comments on non-agenda items. Number 11 is the village clerk's report. Number 12 would be the village trustees report. Number 13 would be the village president's report. Number 14 would be the village manager's report. Number 15 would be the executive session, if it were necessary at that time. And then 16 would be the adjournment. And one of the differences than what we're doing tonight versus what I've just read is that there will not be a committee of the whole. And so what we do now is the committee of the whole, we go through everything just as we're doing tonight. And then it goes on either the consent on the formal agenda or if it's a controversial measure or a planning and zoning measure, it has its own reading. And so with this particular um, method, we will still have the readings. Uh, they'll have uh, several readings if anything is to be codified. And then there'll be plenty of time to comment on the items just as we do now at Committee of the Whole. So it kind of streamlines it, kind of brings uh, the Village of Villa Park into current municipal practices in a more streamlined uh, agenda, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to add that we're not eliminating any opportunity for residents to make any comments on the items that are on our agenda. Uh, so even though you we're used to it, after, I've been on the board now for 10 years, we always had a COW, but then everything we did on the COW went right over to the formal, which we did right afterwards. And this just sort of eliminates that little process, which wasn't really necessary the way because of the way we're set up. But we had to make sure that we still allowed ample opportunity for residents to make comments on the things that we're discussing. And so that's you know part of the reasoning behind this. It, it really won't speed us up a whole lot. But it'll just take another step out of the out of the whole process. So. Uh, the far as the first reading on the ordinance to be codified with no vote, we're required by, if I remember, remember right, by state law or state statute to notify uh, residents ahead of time if we're going to make a change in our village code. And that's why a vote is not necessary the first time around because we're notifying everybody. We'll have an opportunity as a board to discuss that. And then uh, the second reading when we do it, uh, either the next time we have a meeting or sometime thereafter, shortly after that, is when we actually uh, give residents another opportunity to make comments on it. And that's when we'll vote for a, a vote either to institute that um, code change or not to institute that code change. So does anybody from the public have any questions? Seeing none, any members of the board have any questions or comments? Trustee Wagner. Thank you, President Boldis. Um, sometimes we have issues that are brought before the board that are for discussion only. Staff wants input on those issues. Where would we put that on the agenda? Would that be, uh, would that become a number seven? It yeah. wouldn't be number seven, probably like a okay. number nine. It'd be nine, yeah, nine, nine will be nine. the catch-all. Okay. Yep. So yeah, we get those every now and then, <coughs> staff wants uh, us have a discussion on uh, what direction we would like them to go on an issue and uh, under number nine. Okay, and if two trustees get together and they, they think there's an issue that needs to be addressed, that would also become a number That's nine. That's true. Okay, the other, go ahead. The other nice thing about this too, Trustee uh, Wagner, is right now when we have a discussion in the committee of a whole, our comments aren't really recorded unless we ask. But we make comments on our formal agenda, the clerk records uh, the discussion to a certain extent and that would so if anybody had something they really wanted recorded in the minutes that they had 
made a comment for or against something, it would be there now okay, without having to request it. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, consensus to move this to the formal. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. President Bulpus? Yes. With that, now we will go over to the formal agenda. And do we have any public comment on agenda items? Anything that was on this uh, uh, formal agenda? Seeing none. Do we have any amendments to the agenda from the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, that'll be items A through E. I'm just going to read A, B, and C. Uh, D and E are the things we just talked about in the COW. A is the bill listing for the week of July 10th and July 17th for the total amount of $307,852.01. B is the minutes from the village COW meeting on July 10th, 2017. C is the minutes from the village formal board meeting on July 10th, 2017. Do I have a, a motion for the consent agenda? President Trustee Bolton, Wagner. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Trustee Allo. Second. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Cazone. Yes. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Tucker. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Salella. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. President Bolthus. Yes. Item four, uh, first reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, amending the Villa Park Municipal Code relating to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. It is a recommendation of the Village Attorney and the, that the order of business for regular meetings for the Board of Trustees be updated to reflect more current municipal practices, including within this proposal is a change to the meeting start time from 7.30 to 7 p.m. as well as the, as the uh, items uh, 1 through 16 that the manager just read a couple minutes ago. Do I have a motion for the first reading of the ordinance? President Pulthus. Trustee Wager. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Trustee Al. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call please. Trustee Cazone. Yes. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Tucker. Yes. Trustee Salella. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. Present Bolthus. Yes. Item five, public comments on non-agenda items. Does anyone from the public have any comments on a non-agenda item? We come up to the podium, uh, sign in, state your name and address for the, for the record, please. Pounds out of ink. <laughs> oh, sorry. My name's too long, yeah. Um, Hi, um, I'm John Tomaszewski. You guys have known me from uh, previous meetings. I came here. I live in an area that floods dramatically whenever we get, you know, heavy rains for a period of time. I have uh, two, uh, two homes going up to the east of my property, and uh, I was more concerned about the current status of the homes are coming along. Well, the one home's coming along. They got the foundation. They've been grading the property. Um, they got two mountains of dirt in the backyard, and the foundation is approximately six feet off my property line. And um, the grading looks like it's about three feet to right to my property line. And I'm extremely concerned about how they're going to handle the water coming off the existing home. I had submitted pictures to everyone on the board including CDs of years and years. I've been there since, uh, I can't even mention the, <laughs> the amount of time, but um, I, I'm just very concerned about how this water is going to be handled. And um, I've been asking the current status of the current uh, permits that have been permitted. I know that the foundation, they're gonna start with building the structure. They got the sewer approved. And um, I'm just very concerned right now that um, the correct thing is going to be done for the stormwater runoff. And um, right now it looks like my property is going to take in all the new property, 
onto my existing uh, area and I've already explained to the manager what pipes I have. I have four inch pipes. It's not going to handle all this water coming in on, onto my property. And um, I'm just very concerned right now. If that's been approved, I would like to know what they're going to do because it's something very dramatic has to be done to take that water on my property line and not to make it worse than what it is existing right now. And that's, that's my main point right now. And I'm not hearing, I come up and everyone says I have to have, uh, uh, make a submittal to, um, in terms of find out whatever documents are out there, but I, I, no one can tell me directly what's going on. So that, that's where I'm at. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I did visit the property one early morning um, and uh, toured and the director Jaskelis uh, showed up and uh, we both took a look at the area and just so everyone understands at home and in the audience and here this is uh, Harrison where there is uh, two new homes uh, being uh, developed on this particular area. Um, staff is taking a look at the plans many, many times. Uh, it's been very slow moving. Um, but to answer your question, there have been two conditional or partial permits issued to the developer uh, for the water, the sewer, uh, the foundation, and the construction of the home. Uh, the drainage uh, permit has not been issued on either residence. Um, that will be um, still, it's still being worked out between staff. Uh, and our third party consultant and the developer. Uh, we believe that um, in the end, uh, there'll be some, a lot of work done on the site for drainage. And uh, we, can, we share your concerns and uh, we're gonna work towards resolving um, the issue. Not, not the flooding, the total flooding, but just to make sure that it is not increased. Um, we did put in extra culverts as uh, we planned. We did meet with some property owners to the east uh, that uh, the water flows through the culverts and in the ditch and into this property owner's area. We have met with that property owner and we're going to shoot some topos to see if anything can be done at that area to alleviate the flooding of this particular area. Your Honor, did I miss anything? No, just that we're well aware of it and we're working diligently and staff and their third party consultant uh, uh, is working on it with the uh, developer and uh, we're still struggling to come around with a, uh, an agreement, so. Okay, yeah, I, I just want we to be here forgot. to express my concern because if you walk up, I have a three foot grade from six foot mm -hmm. to my property. You put some common sense there, mm -hmm. where's that water gonna go? Onto my property, not there, not yeah. on the new property. And you'll see that, we, it's we're well absolutely aware of clear. That, and that's one thing that we're working through that their water does not go on your property. And there's two mountains of dirt in the backyard filling in the area mm -hmm. that used to be the low area, mm -hmm. which I submitted in all those pictures. That area was lower than my property. Right. That held water longer than my property. Right. So We're I want to make that. sure this is not going to be a nightmare for myself. Yeah. And I want me to talk about fire setting right now. I talked about that in previous meetings. So. That's the three homes on my west side of my right. property that's a complete nightmare I have right now. Well, there hasn't been any plans for you to see because there hasn't been any agreement as of yet on, on the water issue. Well, uh, when I come in, they tell me I have to apply for some, you know, forms or whatever. So um, that's why I'm right here. Well, you I'm talking gotten to you guys. Here. So there's nothing available right now. So right. we're still working on it. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none, we'll move down to the village clerk's report. Yes, I have a couple things. Uh, just um, for the public, uh, the Senior Concerns Commission will not be meeting in August. So they, uh, they're they taking a little vacation. That would have been August 7th, first Monday of the month. They will not be meeting. The next meeting is in September. Okay. And then this Wednesday is the final um, July concert for the Kiwanis uh, summer concert over uh, by the gazebo and uh, just so 
the public also knows that we are rained out one day, uh, one Wednesday, because uh, f obviously we just couldn't make it with the rain and the water and the, uh, the grass and everything. And so the Stingrays, who are online to play that night, have rescheduled, and they will be playing August 8th. That's a Tuesday, so it'll be right at the Prairie Path, same place, same everything, but on a Tuesday in August. August 8th, that'll be uh, the Stingrays. We will be advertising it through all kinds of media. <laughs> Uh, but that's the main thing. The last concert this Wednesday, as usual, and then one more in August. And that's all. Thank you. Trustees report. We'll start on our left with Trustee Aiello. I'd like to thank Kiwanis for putting those <laughs> concerts half a block from my office. Yes. But they're great. Yeah, they really good. <laughs> last week's was awesome. It's the best one yet. That's all I have. Trustee Tucker? Nothing tonight. Trustee Wagner? Thanks, President Folsom. I said a couple of things. Um, just to let members of the public know, the Environmental Concerns Commission will be meeting this Thursday uh, here at Village Hall at 715. And uh, they are in need of commissioners. I think they're, they have three openings on their commission. So uh, if folks are interested, contact President Bolthus and or obtain the application online. Uh, just want to let folks know, I mentioned this at our last meeting, uh, about the Welcome Home All Veterans event that's going to be taking place at the VFW uh, on September 23rd uh, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're in need of volunteers, and if you have a relative, a friend who is a veteran and needs help with benefits, uh, there's going to be a wide range of help assistance available at this event and if you want to find out more about it you can go to www.whav.info or you can call 630-474-4037 um, I also wanted to mention again about the uh, Love Your Neighbor Day uh, which is going to also going to be on the 23rd they're looking for volunteers. I think they have 10 seniors who've applied for help with this. Um, and and uh, if folks would like to uh, volunteer, uh, this time I'm prepared. Uh, you can go to www.ccvponline.net or call 630-833 7262 if you want to volunteer or if you know someone who needs help, uh, a senior who needs help with maintenance to their property. And lastly, I just want to let the members of the public know about an event that's going to be taking place at the library. This is an event that was rescheduled. Uh, it was billed as Earth Hour Night Skies. Uh, it's actually not Earth Hour time, but what they're doing is uh, they're having the uh, Naperville Astronomical Association come out this coming Saturday, July 29th from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the library. They'll have telescopes out there for folks who want to look at the night skies. Uh, this is being sponsored by the uh, Villa Park Environmental Concerns Commission. If you go to the library's website, it says that uh, registration closed on the 22nd. I talked to library staff and they're still accepting <coughs> folks who want to uh, participate. This, so this will be kind of a neat program, a very unique program, and um, there's more information on the library's website. And one more thing I just want to <coughs> let folks know about, um, on Saturday, August 5th, uh, State Representative Deb Conroy is going to have a shredding event in Glendale Heights. So if folks want to get rid of their records, you know, there's a lot of concern about people putting paper records on the curb. Uh, go to a shredding event and make sure that they're taken care of uh, securely. So, and that's all I had. Great, thank you. Trustee Ciala. Nothing to report this evening. Trustee Cazone. No report tonight. Trustee Case. Uh, a couple things. In response, we're all aware of what's going on over there. I mean, Trustee Aiello and myself Probably have more emails and text messages than we know what to do with. 
I call manager Keener with a pipe. He goes, I'm working on it. He doesn't even say hello. He knows what we're calling about. <laughs> so if that okay. makes you feel any better, yeah. we're aware so, of it. And I have paperwork up here. I appreciate it. Well, we're all you over look it. look, there's a mountain of dirt. We're, we're all over it. it. All over it. Everybody from the board to the staff is well aware. Okay. And uh, so I don't know if that made you feel better or not. Yeah, no, I, it, the village is supposed to watch for the residents. Right? Residents have been here forever, which I have been. Almost a lifelong resident. I expressed this problem years ago to the previous village Excuse manager. So, cannot yeah, speak just, from there. But anyhow, but I expressed this problem to the previous village manager way back. Nothing was done about the, the water problem, even before this, this, this happened. So that's where the frustration comes in. I submitted pictures. I, I went to the sewer uh, plan. I asked, hey, when are you going to put sewers in the Westlands? Nope, not on the plan. But I showed them pictures of how bad the water problem was. And now it's you know gotten acute. And uh, we know about the fireside snafu. You know, I, I got nailed. I got three homes that, with the grade over six foot coming into my property, which I've been fighting with, with pipes and so forth. All the civil engineers have seen what I've been trying to do on my east side or on my west side. Now I see on my east side, it's another nightmare. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm doing. And that the part two is my residents. Everyone along Wayside has had water problems. We got it on Lane, on the corner of Lane and Wayside. They come to me. They're asking. There's a huge puddle of water that pulls up there. No one wants to deal with it. Again, it should be flowing south down Wayside. That's another problem. That's part two of the problem. And um, everyone's asking me what's going to go on. I got pictures. The new pipe they put in. Halfway with water. <laughs> I'll show you right now. That should be flowing through. It should be going down. Should, it's a huge pipe. But it's halfway with water. Just I can show everyone after the meeting here the pictures. So things need to be addressed here and that's why I'm here very concerned and I, I could see things getting put under the rug and that happened before and I just wish it won't happen again well I just wanted to let you know we're we're all we all know what's going on so I'm okay I know you're not that's, forgotten trust me well I've been up here before and I've been forgotten so this is part two thank you anything else one more what can we do with the post office about cleaning it up? The one on Ardmore Avenue across from the fire station. Oh, the current post office. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, I've uh, directed our fire chief to work with the postmaster of that particular building uh, to kind of gain their trust. Uh, fire Chief Rokosnik has given, I believe, the postmaster three different landscaping firms to contact to work with to remediate the issues within that area. Um, I don't believe they're resolved. Um, there's a slight improvement. Still plenty of work to do, including their parking lot. Needs some attention. Um, and we're working towards that, along with the uh, former post office as well. It's not easy to deal with the federal government. Oh, I know that. So. <laughs> it's just it's amazing. Anything else? I'm done. Okay. Uh, President's report. Just a couple things tonight. First off, I just want to remind everybody that on August 5th, Saturday, is Coffee with the Board at 9 o'clock up here in the, uh, in the uh, meeting room here on the other side of the wall here. Um, I also wanted to mention that I noticed I was over at the metro station this week, and I was looking pretty good with the new wall in there. I uh, appreciate all the work that's uh, been done over there. Um, looks good and uh, there's a lot of events I noticed coming up uh, that Parks and Rec's putting on so we all got the Parks and Rec brochure and uh, should have delivered to our doorstep this today uh, take a look at it there's tons of things in there to do uh, through the Parks and Rec's department so appreciate and thank them for all their work there uh, there's one other issue that I wanted to bring to the board's attention um, it has to do with uh, liquor license um, you may not know that uh, Caps Bar and Grill, 
uh, the current person who runs that is uh, lease is being terminated and the end of July and that caps is owned by the same people who own the Highview restaurant uh, uh, area uh, uh, Iliopolis is I think her name is and I talked to her about uh, she's going to be taking over the caps bar and has applied for a liquor license uh, what my plan is now unless I hear any negative comments is that on July 31st when Tommy who owns the license at the caps um, is out of there and he would no longer have a license that I'll just automatically switch that license over to uh, Iliopolis uh, so they can stay open and uh, maybe the name will still be caps that's still up in the air or she might have to change the name so if that's okay with the board, uh, we won't have to come before the board any action on that because we're not increasing or decreasing any liquor license, the number of the liquor license. So just wanted to make you aware of that. If anybody uh, has any issue with that, uh, let me know and we'll see if we can work through it. Okay? So that's all I have. After that, we'll move on to the manager's report. Thank you, Ronnie. I just have a couple <coughs> items. Just want to uh, Remind everyone that we have a national night out coming up, which is Tuesday, August 1st at 6 to 9 at the Iowa Rec Center. Additionally, uh, our FEMA flood map panels, there's a review, I believe, this Thursday, July 27th, at the county building at 4 o'clock for the area residents. I think municipalities are invited a little bit earlier. And then we also have a survey that's taking place called Share Your Ideas for the Walking and Biking in Villa Park. And that's an online survey. So what you can do, because rather than reading the Survey Monkey link for the web, is just go to your new Village Matters on page five of the Village Matters. We got those today, right? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. And then on page five, it talks about the online survey and where it can be taken. So please take the survey um, and let us know your ideas. Uh, it's part of the... Uh, master planning for the bike uh, paths that we're doing. And additionally, it won't be long and Villa Park will have its first brew fest, so take some time and look through the Villa, Village Park, Villa Matters, uh, Village Matters, plenty of information in there. So thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Attorney's report? No report tonight. Okay. Item number 11 is consider executive session. Or IL, I mean 51, uh, let me start over again, executive session. 5 ILCS 120-2 C1 Personal Matters, 5 ILCS 120-2 C5 Purchase and Lease of Property, C is 5 ILCS 120-2 C6 Sale or Lease of Property, D is 5 ILCS 120-2 C11 Pending Litigation, and E is 5 ILCS 120 2 C 21 discussion of closed session minutes. Do I have a motion for executive session? President Pultis. Oh, we're going to go down here. Trustee okay. Tizone tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Mr. President, I'll make that motion. Okay. Trustee Wagner? I'll second the motion. Uh, roll call vote, please. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. President Pultis? Yes. With that, we'll be going into executive sessions. We will not be coming back. We'll adjourn right out of there. So have a good evening, Bill Parker. I'm not going to hit the panel because we're not done yet. So. Okay.